Okay, we're close enough to 710, so call to order uh, December 3rd, 2018, Municipal Building Committee. Welcome, everyone. Uh, apologizing for not being here last week. Um, you yeah, good excuse. <laughs> per personal issues uh, <coughs> wouldn't allow me to be here, but I appreciate you guys uh, telling the line. So um, let's start by uh, identifying somebody that's going to take the minutes for this week. Anybody want to volunteer? <laughs> right at it. Is, is, is that a... Uh, no, oh, me? <laughs> David, have you done that yet? I, you, I haven't. Would you be willing to do that? I guess short and sweet. Take a stab at it. Not, really short. <laughs> not a, not short a significant okay. undertaking. A prize. Like yeah, exactly. Okay, so thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Correspondence and public comments. Has anybody recognized anything that's come in of late that we haven't discussed? No. no. I know the only thing I, I have been forwarding you uh, general correspondence that's come from the uh, select board pertaining to asking us to be involved in certain conversations and at certain meetings. Um, I want to try and work with the select board to make sure they copy the Hadley Buildings web. Uh, email address rather than me and and, mm -hmm. and, and Tim, but but uh, in the interim, I'm just making sure that we get everything uh, to the Hadley Buildings Gmail account. Are you on that account? Um, they did send, so I was set up, and I okay. did what I was supposed to, so I should. Be. Great. Okay, just want to make sure everybody's seeing everything. Other than being uh, having confusion between Man, him and David. his son, <laughs> I keep on bouncing. Oh, right, of course. <laughs> Okay, that's well. So that's good. Um, I see Larry is here. Uh, we'll we'll get to you in just a few minutes. Hang out for a few minutes, if you will. Um, I'd like to see if we can get an update from the library uh, and the senior center uh, building code uh, building uh, committee liaisons. Uh, maybe Dan, you want to start with whatever you know from uh, um, the library. Uh, the, sorry, the senior center. Um. Geez, we, we did have a meeting. Um, Subsequent to the vote or prior to that? Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, the, the, there was just a little bit left to, uh, to, to approve as far as the, the layout of the offices and how they were structured. And they did a great job uh, uh, finalizing that. Um, at what uh, level are the plans and specs at now? Are they are they you know, ninety nine percent? Yeah, they're going to work on this, and they're hoping to go out to bid. You know, yeah, they're first of like February. Yeah, they're they're first of February. Yeah, or just about there. Okay. And, they figure with the holidays, they'd like to do it earlier. But okay. Yeah, that's I, I did forget about the minutes. We'll get to that. But but my question actually was, um, had anyone discussed with Suzanne the. Um, desire for us to review the, the plans at least as a as a group just in case we had any additional I mean, comments or concerns most of the we're plans at 99 really, percent but most of the outside stuff is was agreed on by the planning board so they can't change a lot of that stuff a lot of the stuff um, so nothing really changed other than shortening up the front of it a little bit I'm that. referring to like the uh, mechanical specs and controls and things that we might have some concerns over in the longer term pertaining to Building systems. Uh, you know, I, I always put forward to try to get something from them as far as you know what the, what are the maintenance costs going to be and whatnot. But yeah, the, the, I don't think they're at that. We we did have a whole sit down and figure it all out, but of course now that it's smaller, they're going to have to go back, and that's going to be part of the figuring. Is yeah, a lot of your uh, engineering is going to have to be reconfigured on. Oh, so they don't have, have the design ninety nine percent ready for bid. They're they're still having to. Well, they've got a they model the specs. Them. Yeah, they have they have designs and layouts. They don't have the specs. You know, it did get smaller. Okay. Right. They had it all done once. Now it's smaller, so you've got to adjust all your you know air flow and sizes and all that stuff. So yeah, they may they probably have to readjust all the count. You know, silly silly little things like how many square feet of floor and what kind of you know how yeah. many you know moving right? yeah. zones. So, you know, okay. Resizing that kind of stuff. Yeah, it just I don't want to lose track of us just 
I mean, the best we can be, It is going to be, uh, well, hopefully a redundant system or set up as a redundant, yeah. to, you know. Yeah, I, I don't want to lose sight of us just, you know, helping out as best we can to ensure this building is uh, built the way everyone yeah, hopes I mean, it will. Maybe right? we should bring that up with the select board. Yeah. And certainly at some point during the draft of the specs, it would be very helpful if, if we could have a little bit of input on that. I think that would be something that, that uh, would be. Yeah, we have a lot of qualified persons here that could yeah. that could lend their uh, skills to improving or, or just ensuring that the project is uh, the high quality that we hope. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could just ask Suzanne at the next I meeting will. to. I mean, I put progress a, a bunch of times. I you know I put out you know I I really think that this you know. It looks like this is going to end up like the safety complex, and it's going to be a nothing special stick built building. And, and I'd rather see something more energy efficient, a little more, you know, effort put into, uh, you know, materials and whatnot. And some of that gets through, and some of it is, you know, is that unfortunately the money yeah was tight to start with, and it's even worse now. Yeah, now that you know we've added a bunch of costs for you know redesign, so anything that we could have saved and and you know used for you know exterior insulation or silly things like that it's just it's not going to be there well unfortunately because of small the way small towns have to work it, there's no real easy way of dealing with that up front um, before you go out and get approval through this resident it is a shame uh, i totally agree with you it's kind of backwards to some extent you would like to get some idea from everybody how, how and what, what they would like designed before you get some costs to go forward to the residents. But it's just the way it is, unfortunately. And then we Well, you know, the road sign said build it, build it right, or build it, build it right the first time, or I can't recall what the yeah. mantra was. So, so let's, let's, hold, let's hold everyone to a quality building as best we can at this stage. I recognize we can't, we can't fall back. and. Well, we yeah. did try to, you know, I was on it, and we tried to do what we did wrong on the, not do what we did wrong on the safety complex, you know, have some redundancy, you know, take care of, yeah. you know, make sure that you can, you know, zone buildings the proper way and not try to feed okay. one room off another one. And, and we did try to get metal roof, and that didn't yeah. work out. So put that in the 20 year capital plan. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else to add? Um, and, you know, without seeing the, you know, the specs aren't going to come out for a while. You know. Okay. So you, so you can do on a progress uh, set for us to review, just PDF or something like that. Maybe, we can yeah. maybe have, um, send them to a... Uh, you know, ideally, PDM yeah. we, we, there, there's been some discussion about this, the Senior Center project not being overly transparent about the, about the process and maybe simply having the architect or OPM at our meeting uh, present the, the plan and us to ask questions would be enough to, uh, you know, move move towards a more transparent yeah. process. Well, they they did say that um, they at at this point they would love to see some you know sort of public presentation, and there was a little bit of back and forth about that, and and the, they sort of decided on well maybe just something in the new newspaper rather than have a. Uh, you know, like a public forum where people could actually, you know, shake the stick at the town again for spending all the money. And this is, there's still a bunch of naysayers in town who don't think that's where we should be putting our money. So, I mean, it, they really didn't want to, you know, go down that road again after all that's happened. I mean, you know. Nobody's looking on this committee to cancel anything or change right. anything significantly. Can't change it, no. Just no, to ensure that we have the kind of quality that right. we expect. Yeah, well, we're trying to get the quality, but of course they've been cutting and cutting and cutting, and every time something else gets cut, it's like, okay. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that we did go, you know, when when the select board voted to downsize it and, and uh, bring it back to around 10,000 square feet, um, you know, I, I had mentioned this. The only reason I can vote for it is because that's what we came up with as a building committee, one of your original designs, it, it was around 10,000 feet. It, it wasn't 12,000. So, and that's the only reason I could justify voting for that. Um, I, 
you know, much rather see something, you know, that's going to fit the size of the town. Sure. Um, like you mentioned, you know, Southampton's got basically one room, and they have, you know, a larger population in their town, and their senior center is one room in the town hall, and it's nice, but that's all they need. So, you know, it, it gives justification for naysayers to say, well, this is overkill. Right. So as far as mechanics, insulating, and all that stuff, um, you know, my experience at UMass, it's uh, a lot of the directors will give up um, the plumbing in the whole building to get their fancy lighting and, you know, whatnot. Um, and is that something that we could kind of guide, I guess, to make sure that you're not putting in a fancy entrance and a lousy or a loss H of the HVAC. basic mechanical systems. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, I mean, that so was um, that was the goal, David, to have a representation from our committee members on those committees. But you know, we're a minority in that in that group, and that's been that's been difficult in some cases. But I think everybody's well-meaning. It's just I mean, I did know, sit. We all want what we want, right? So yeah. I did sit on the mechanical with you know we yeah. tried to get okay you know what's what's been working for the you know your redundancy or you know easy to control you know something that's not the proprietary stuff you know design everything so that it's you know easier to assemble and put together you know not run stuff all over the place for no good reason mm -hmm. as far as sinks and stuff like that okay i'm going to ask the select board if they'll entertain just a presentation from senior center opm and architect to us just to sort of spitball some thoughts and go, you know, just so we have the confidence level that we're getting at least the minimum we could, we could expect here and, and maybe well, not more, but. I, I thought that EDM did a great job at putting out, you know, immediately they wanted all the glitz and glamour and all the bells and whistles they could right up front. The OPM quickly paired them back and, and kept them in control and they did a great job and I think, you know, through the OPM we'll get a, a quality product. Um, it's not going to be substandard you know, yeah. to the point of the, the safety complex. I don't think you're going to end up with those yeah. types of problems. Well then that's, that's the second part to the equation, right? If we have an OPM that's guiding the process doing the inspection and keeping everything on point during construction, making yes. sure that the, the work actually meets the expectations of the specs and yeah. drawings then we'll we'll get the quality that we initially design into it. And as long as we initially design something in there that we, we can all stand behind then we should be okay. But I, I'd still like to to hear from them, you know. So. Okay. All right. Um David, anything on the library? <coughs> well, we last met October 9th, I think it was, so not much has happened. We've been kind of waiting to see what was gonna happen with the planning board. But at that time we did get a uh, sort of a 3D interior view of what it could look like and get a sense of the space and um, a lot of questions were asked about um, what it would look like so one of the tasks of the, uh, the committee was to uh, go to different libraries or different places and think about what kinds of looks they like you know, what is you know, bring send in examples or whatever just to, so we can start looking at that um, I believe um, they were supposed to come up with a revised cost estimate for our next meeting or the following just so that we have a sense of where we are. Okay. Um, it was a little bit of a surprise on the uh, architect side that we were thinking metal roof for some reason. So they were still going to get us a cost on that just to see if it could or could not fit. Only, only because of the question of whether or not it was even allowed um, to oh, begin with. Yeah. So oh, they I just, see. Yeah totally didn't even think about it. You know, I did mention it a couple of times, but <laughs> you know, so it was re-emphasized. Just get us a number, just so we get a sense of where, where it puts us. Um, because part of this project is uh, going with solar, which would mm -hmm. they're thinking will fully um, um, maintain the electricity needs for the library. So. Which would be adoptable more to the metal. To the metal, which which you're, yeah. You're so, yeah. Right. so that was the hope. So we'll see. Um, it's been done in the past at a, uh, a cost that we could probably handle. But uh, okay. uh, so at this point, uh, they are also invited to, to meet with the select board on Wednesday. So we'll all be there. And, and then immediate following, I have a library planning board meeting. So um, or planning meeting. 
I did ask uh, Allison to provide us with any kind of exterior image, images mm -hmm. that, that there is. I know last time I looked at it, it was, you know, it still was in development, so there wasn't a lot of details available. It was a very traditional building, had a lot of uh, references to the library or to the Goodwin and, and other things. Um, um, but I wanted to sort of understand how maybe the two buildings might might complement each other, at least yeah. in terms of finishes, colors, anything we can bring together to make this feel like more of a, a complex of town buildings rather than two very different uh, aesthetics. Well, right now it is brick. Um, yeah. It'll have a somewhat steep um, hipped roof uh, and parts of it, at least on the front side. Um, there is a Clara story that goes around the whole center, which Probably we'll see what the costs are. I, I'm thinking we don't need that many windows because the amount of light you're going to get coming in. Um, but we'll see. And it's kind of the way they've set the spaces. It's a little bit sort of chambered, so you'll have a you know, a large area with a Clara story with walls, and they'll go into the next area, same kind of thing. Um, but we're still going with the east-west glazing, so you get the uh, the light coming through. On Know, at the ground level. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the, also the other hope was with the, uh, the reconfiguring of the parking lot, the library will get their children's uh, courtyard back because that's one thing that they gave up when the senior center ended up needing more parking and um, they got squished essentially. So hopefully we'll get that back and they'll have a place to actually do some outside programs that isn't in the front of the building. So. Um, okay. But yeah, we'll uh, see what the next steps are Wednesday. All right, thanks, Dave. Okay, so we went through presentations. I know you all read the minutes from the last meeting. Um, thank you, Tim, right, for uh, putting these together. Um, obviously, I wasn't here, so I won't be voting on the minutes approval, but um, is there a motion to approve the minutes from last meeting? Motion. Second. Any discussion, questions, comments? Okay, all those in favor of the minutes from the last meeting as uh, written? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very none. Approved. Uh, I'm abstaining, obviously. Great, thank you. All right, so our next item, which is really the, the genesis of our uh, meeting here this, this uh, evening, uh, is to talk to Mr. Tuttle on some of your findings, and uh, Tim, if you want to kind of preface it by saying anything, what Larry's been working on, what he's going to present tonight. Um, just, you know. Well, there's a, a number of projects. The first, uh, the largest one was uh, the select board gave us a task to update the uh, cost estimates on the Russell School. So at some point in the future, we can uh, have a non binding vote to the residents to see if they wish to keep the building or sell it. So uh, Larry did go through the building a couple times. He uh, had Gary Berg help uh, get him in the building and do some measurements, uh, get the structural engineer in there to take a look at some stuff and review the uh, entire old uh, estimate and uh, he has given us the update which this was emailed to everybody I believe. Okay. So uh, I think it's it's extremely uh, good breakdown of um, bringing up the, the cost to today's date and uh, it certainly shows that it's going to be. Do you want to summarize for the, for the theoretical uh, online audience that might be watching uh, the comparison of the initial uh, project costs versus so there what was the a, findings are today? Yeah, There's a couple of things that are slightly different. Uh, one of the things that we told Mr. Tuttle to do was uh, we wanted him with the structural engineer to verify that we could utilize the building without too much major structural upgrades because of seismic. He did do that. We also informed him that uh, 
a westerly small addition that would have both the new bathrooms, stairwell, and elevator would be the best alternative to a design whereby the old uh, report had it on the south side. Uh, so that was the premise of his review. And the, the total price tag at this point, based on the estimate, is around $23 million. And what will that give us? That will basically give us an entire complete uh, re revamped building, essentially gutted for um, uh, utilities and mechanicals, uh, getting it up to um, today's specs. One of the issues that we're faced with is we cannot change and alter the interior layout with the interior walls because that would trigger a full seismic uh, update. Mm -hmm. So we've, you know, we certainly all feel that, depending on what we use it for, and our, our guesstimate right now is that would be office space. Um, because this town hall is too small at this point in time to house everybody, that that might be the alternative use of that building, move everybody over there. And it can be in an open, open space type of form. Owners has that to some extent. Uh, I don't think it's like in four. Yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll pull the open space only maintaining the partitions as they exist. Correct. So and you essentially four or five persons per classroom or some some so variation yeah, to yeah variation to offices that. like that one actually right. works pretty well. Yeah, so you can hear your neighbors talking, and sometimes yeah, yeah. it's good and sometimes it's bad. But you can collaborate differently. But, you know, when when you look at how the town hall operates in different departments, there is a th that is is certainly something that can be utilized. Certainly, the collector, the treasurer, uh, and you know they can be together. It's a kind of work together, whereby uh, inspection services work well, work with the uh, planning board and zoning. So you can utilize those groups and group the different areas. I'm just curious, with, with the existing uh, square footage plus whatever you're proposing in terms of uh, that addition for the utilitary services of vertical circulation elements in the bathrooms, What's, what would be the total square footage of the, of the building that would be used or that we could repurpose for here or other? The, the total area that was noted in the initial study was uh, 10,530 square feet. Uh, we would be adding probably because of each floor, we would be probably adding around uh, between 25 and, and 3,200 square feet. And with that addition, we were thinking of hitting every floor, even the attic. Yes. And um, whereby the other one did not do that. Right. It only addressed the two principal floors. It did yes. not even include the basement. We yeah, felt that the parking was on the west side, that the new entrance could be there, thereby coming in more of the basement level, and then having all all oh, floors access. access. Right. Okay. So we said 23 million. 23 million is great. And, and that gives us, although fixed furnishings and all the sort of specifics of a of, of moving certain departments or people there wouldn't be included. It would be a move-in ready building with the finishes right. necessary to yeah. just install fabric partitions or desks or whatever. Correct. Okay. So I don't know if this is correct, but it sounds like it's $1,675 a square foot yeah. to, to put that. Uh, and the together. reason it's so high is because of the um, exterior facade right. and how yeah. that's exactly. trying to bring some of that back and stabilizing it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with the intended added use, we did develop additional parking also, which was not in the original. That's in the 23 million to have some parking. Okay. Um, 
questions? Anybody on the Berlari on this? Well, I'm just curious. So on the porticos, is that a total rebuild or is that? The uh, east facing and the north facing tower would be uh, restructured. The west facing is where the proposed addition, that would be oh, taken rebuild. away. Okay. Some of the materials might be salvaged for yeah. reutilization. Yeah. Um, but that would be the, the area where it would be, uh, we took that demolition and salvage mm -hmm. and applied it. Good that. place to do it. Yeah. It's going far yeah. anyway. So I'm guessing the 3,200 square feet, small on a footprint over two, three floors, it doesn't put you into the ball field where we have a, a, a problem with uh, wetlands or mitigation in that sense, or or I think there's a utility that runs through there. There's stormwater. So we're not, we're well, not we building didn't that have far a, out. A precise topo. I mean, yeah. we're, you would certainly be flirting with it. Yeah. Because you are coming out and away down that bank. And yeah. So. Well, it's compensatory storage, I think it was, that was the issue. Um, and but, we yeah. felt that because it, it drops down that there's, there's ways of dealing with compensatory storage on the site, so I, I don't see well, that as a major issue. And we just really very schematically just allocated some area and attached it to the building. Uh, we could change that configuration, it could change in proportion, and it wouldn't go as far west and, and still house those, those items. But a new building would be, what, six, seven hundred dollars a square foot? I'm not it, saying I want to get rid of it. I'm just saying for argument. It shouldn't. Point. It shouldn't even be that high. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. what, Larry? Four hundred. Uh, depending on what you're what you're looking for, yeah. uh, it could be even substantially less than that. Uh, but yeah. how vanilla do you want to get, or how specific to a use can you define at this point? David, that's a good figure to show. Yeah, right. Your six, seven, or four. 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 Four is a good all in number, but okay. you know, like Larry's indicated, it could be less than that. But yeah, you know, just you're not going to want to be in a sort of a pre engineered building and call it a town hall. Right. Yeah. You know, it could be underneath that by a substantial margin. Not to mention the labor restrictions for public you know, bidding. The I mean, it, prevailing it wage, and that was one there. of the big things that, that influenced the numbers in, in just advancing up the current. But it is an icon. It's it's a very unique, architecturally very nice looking building, it and is. it's it's a, just a fundamental question that you know some people are going to say absolutely no. Uh, it's way too much money to save. Who cares about old buildings? And others like me are going to say <laughs> that's not that's okay because it's a building that. One loves to look at. Right. I mean, that's the trick of it, though, yeah. isn't it? Because I, it's my it's probably my favorite architectural yeah. building in, in this town. Well, it's the only but one. But I, I frankly not sure I care if the town owns it as long as it's preserved. Yeah. Right. I mean, let's be honest. If well, if that building stays there a hundred years and it's it's privately owned, it'll make almost no difference personally to me. Uh, others may want that to be a town-owned building where they can go in and enjoy, and I respect that. But well, I think that's part of the There's another numbers. side to that, too. There's an in-between. There's a person that would like to spend that kind of money, but <coughs> you could build a new building for that and maybe another building for another department somewhere. Right. Exactly. Know, as opposed to putting everything in one pile. What would be the um, cost per foot to replicate that building? Hmm. Higher than 1000 yeah. Okay. So so, so, yeah, some of the detailing in there. Well, some of it you would not now want to pursue because you'd be in violation of some of the accessibility codes and regulations. And, and so. It'd be a steel frame with a brick veneer. Yeah, I mean, and you're, it would have, you're still yeah. jumping up in place. And, and do any of those entryways with current materials in, in, in that detail, you're going to escalate that price very quickly. Yeah, agreed. Uh, but that's the, what I was getting at is that's the trick of the non-binding vote because right. 
if you say, right. well, uh, should we should we do this or not do it? A lot of people may say no, but they also may say, well, what what if we do sell it? Can we can we ensure that it's it's protected visually uh, I and think that it's maintained? We're going to have to say that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Is I mean, the you know, the historical commission will say that it were, there would be would preservation rest restrictions too? on it, of course. So I think we just have to be careful about how we say this because. Well, the other thing too, and now we're talking about making parking over there for the town, and how is that going to affect somebody else owning that building? How does that parking work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I believe you could put any any kind of restrictions or deeds to parking lot that town gets use of it and whatnot. Right, but right. if you somebody know, else is using it, they have to have their parking space right. too. If it's not, you know, a town. But in way. general, I think, you know, I, I agree. I don't care who owns it, as long as it looks the same. But you would have to protect the town as far as we don't want to lose parking for this building and so on. You know, of course they have to have. If you have to, you're too restricted. Well, you're going to get an offer of twenty thousand dollars for it. Well, we've been down that road. Right, exactly. north. Right, right down River Drive. Yeah, right. working on it. Yeah. 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 So, um, but I, I do agree with you. I don't care who owns it, as long as it looks the same. One, right. one of the other things too that I was doing in the in the column that was the recommendations is taking line item entries from the original report and all of the effort to refurbish the existing windows and then fit them with exterior storm windows so that you have some energy efficiency. I pooled that money and had to add some unfortunately and just replace the windows in a visually appearing similar window. That and we're with a triple blaze or a double blaze. And, yeah, and so that you, what the original report was doing, and I think may have been directed by the town, is what is legitimate. There was a lot of refurbishing, and that deterioration has just advanced and accelerated to such a point that okay. refurbishing is now replacement. Okay. And if you replace, you don't replace necessarily in kind across the board because all you're doing is putting a, a, an operational maintenance cost and cycle into the building that you can sidestep. So your, your dollar is a little bit better applied in that recommendation. And it's a kind of fine line with the Secretary of the Interior Standards for rehabilitation versus renovation. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, but. Windows are generally something that are agreed that a more efficient modern window is, is a right. more sensitive approach in some ways. Right. So I mean, when they good. did that first survey, I went in and those windows are pegged in the corners and the pegs have fallen out. So I don't know, you know, I mean, it's so dry rot, there's nothing there. I mean, it's, uh, it'll, it'll just get worse until we decide what to do with it. And that's, yeah, that's really the, the reason we need to, we need to come up with a plan. Yeah, it is really accelerating at this point. Is there any, did, were you able to come up with any uh, ideas to somehow stabilize or, or slow any deterioration until a decision is made? There's nothing you can do other than... Um, you know... It's too you, expensive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's Pandora's box, yeah. really, unfortunately, because you, you touch one thing and what you do is you aggravate something else. And giant blue tarp. <laughs> I think at one point, Larry, we, we a long time ago said, well, maybe we should repoint, you know, but then it was, you know, then the windows and it's then this and it's like you said, it's just going to, there's no the way to But the original report had 60% repointing. Now you're at probably 85, 90%. Okay. So okay. why don't, you know, you're basically rebuilding the building in that line item. Mm. And what's the condition of the roof at this point? Is it leaking? Or? Uh, there, there wasn't any discernible leaks. There has been periodic uh, replacement of some isolated slates. We're probably due for about another hundred slate replacement. We've done it twice in nine yeah. years. So the we'll concern look. is that all of the fasteners are deteriorating. Mm -hmm. It's not. The slate's not failing, it's just... It, well, it's some it, of that slate is starting to, starting to crumble, crumble and, and break apart. The flat but, roof should be... I sealed it, um, coated it last year. It is going to be due, you know, <coughs> So is you know, that something that this committee recommends to the selectmen to uh, um, make sure that 
or keep if you don't have a, a good roof. You know, well, we have been, years, we we have been keeping up with the roof as yeah, it is needed. Well, was a we budget. get to about a hundred, and we, for it's that. about seven thousand dollars. Then we that was, we have a repair. I mean, that's the problem is we voted uh, to to just not to well dispose of North Hadley Village Hall three years ago, and we still own it, and it's getting worse, and we're not taking care of it, and it's gonna it's gonna be a real issue, and so yeah, that's what makes that's the historic preservation restriction so easy for the new owner. Historically, we'd let you slide into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I mean, right? What do do we spend money on this? I mean, knowing that it's gonna be I mean, two, I have two years maybe, maybe before every time we, there's a you know I did patch it all up, coat the flat part. We are probably due for some slate being replaced in another, you know, next year or the year after. Uh, I go up there after every heavy rain and mark where any leaks are or anything, and there hasn't been any, you know. It, it was year. noted by the structural engineers that <coughs> the framing method, while traditional and, and, and for the time period, was fine, it is by no means acceptable currently, and that there is no. Uh, clips or brackets or it, it's just you know cut nails and, and so any kind of real work up on that roof becomes more and more a vulnerable situation in that uh, it is not a house of cards but it's it's going to start approaching start that. removing some of the load off the top and might right, affect it, something it, you else. gotta be very discreet yeah. as to how you address some of that work because Right now, it, it's it's just all gravity. You know, it's a nice heavy roof and it's not moving, but there is potential with some water getting in, deterioration of the decking that's going to put some strain on on individual framing members, rafters, and so forth. And and those joints are not what would be viewed as secure joints under today's regulations. And could you? Briefly explain the the, the uh, not having to seismically reinforce the, the building. Well, the, the code that's been the code says that if you you cross th certain thresholds of loading within the structure, that you are obligated then to expand out and, and address some of the seismic concerns across the board and. Right now, again, because of the, the observed joinery and just some of the conditions seen, you accept what you see, and then you know, is it a, a percentage beyond that uh, that is now then guiding you towards that more severe uh, address of that uh, seismic issue, which is gets back to the roof framing and so forth. Uh, you start changing those floor loads, and you you cross that threshold very quickly. So just putting up what you feel is an innocent partition, and some were done. So I'm saying that the structural review has just stayed, stated that those stay. What was done was done. There was some some, some concern. There is a beam that was introduced, and, and its bearing point is one of the arched windows. And it's not ideal but no investigation went back to why was that being put in you know what was the cause and effect that said this was a solution that we could get by with no one has, has approached that and there was reinforcement of some of the floor years ago i don't know exactly when that work was done that was done in the 90s so we had some some major cracking. Uh, there was some, some major movement of the building. There was a bit of a little bit of an earthquake here, and there was some movement. Uh, those beams had cracked, and uh, we felt that it was there was certainly a need. So, and I think that probably with some of that movement, that aggravated some of the water infiltration through the foundation, mm -hmm. because <clears throat> if there was the roof is one, but if you can prevent some of the water from coming in. Uh, into the foundation and, and just sort of saturating that basement floor, that would be a big plus. But that's where the minute you start excavating alongside the building, you're finding more and more and more problems, and scope creep would undoubtedly kick in. And it doesn't address uh, salvaging those entryways, which are 
basically falling away from the, the main building. That's one thing. There hasn't been water on the floor in that building even this year, which is in the cellar. Which is, yeah, it is amazing. Is. Well, it was pretty damp. It's damp, but, but there's no yeah, standing or, or water like stains. Well, it just means the fines have all flushed out. For 16, <laughs> yeah, 16 <laughs> inches of brick and rock soak it up. Yeah, addressing the waterproofing around that foundation system, I'm sure, would be a challenge as well. Yeah. Do you think the uh, floors would support office use? As opposed to a residential use, something like that. I think I think that as long as as we're cognizant of you know putting in departments and you don't have heavy paper file storage concentrated loads or or we address that or you look at it and accommodate that, I think that you're not in dire straits. You had education in there, so yeah, it well, is more than residential. What yeah. would happen if you could you put like apartments in there? What would that easier? What would that, that you know trigger trigger it? Um, the thing is that you're put you're putting a dead load into that system yeah, to the exactly. capacity that you would. You're saying somebody seismic. would have to bring up the seismic if they wanted yeah. to buy it and make yeah. it into a yeah. apartment complex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The configuration mm -hmm. change is the trickiest part. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, in the recommendation, when we moved bathrooms out into the addition. The area that is used for the bathroom right now, basically, you just stripped out fixtures and utilized the space. Right. You know, there was no subdividing. Or yeah, you can't reconfigure that space. Right. Okay. Now, one of the things that you know, there has been some discussion, and I don't know if it'll, it could even go anyplace. Was if, if there is a decision to sell a building, and certainly we would have res historical restrictions on it, could we give an incentive for purchase by using CPA monies? And there's, there's still... It's not without precedent, mm -hmm. right? That's right. But what is in CPA money right now? Quite a bit. I mean, not $23 million. No, no, but there could be something given. I mean, that's when they talked. They talked about giving CPA money to the um, on North Hadley Hall as an incentive. Uh, so, I mean, that could be also something to be discussed at Russell School. We got to be realistic about mm -hmm. this. I don't see twenty-three million dollars yeah, no. being voted on very quickly. <laughs> you know, given you know the library and the senior center and the fight that the was, right and it would have to be targeted towards the exterior and a whole bunch yes. of things like that i mean there'd be all kinds of strings attached but um so is, is there um last week you said we shouldn't um bring anything to the town meeting until north Hadley hall or you rather that it wouldn't i i really feel strongly personally and why I even bother bringing something to the residents because you know the first thing is somebody's going to say is, why should we vote on anything? You can't even do anything with the North Hadley mm -hmm. Town Hall. I, mean, I, I think it'll be, the, you know, will certainly be there. Uh, and the, I would hope that by the time we get to the point of presenting this, that there will be an offer on the table to buy and purchase North Hadley. We have to find out on Wednesday what the status is on that because there was a couple of questions we had asked and it still have, they still haven't been answered. We've gone back out for another realtor search. So if we can't get a realtor, why do we need a realtor? We Can we do it? We have an agreement without one. Yeah, yeah, we got yeah, it. I really don't understand blue. why that why why that never happened. I mean it should have happened. I don't either. That would have that building would have been repaired by now if they would have taken that man's mm -hmm. offer who does a great job in that part of town upkeeping those buildings. And we should, we could have been, just, you might have had fire trucks still in there. Right, and he offered that. Oh, he offered that. I just. So with all this in mind, should we be thinking about Russell School in terms of a short term, what do we need to do with it in the next five years? Well, I mean, the way I see it is you, you're advocating not to, not to advance it in the springtime. 
but maybe by the fall we'd be prepared to have a non-binding vote on Russell School. The thing of it is, is that I don't want to say, hey, do you want to spend $23 million on this without saying what you're going to get for $23 million? Are we going to get everybody from here moved over there? Are we going to get a planning board? And I mean, what's what's the goal? You know, who's going to go there and what's the value to well, the community for that? I think without, that? without hearing, you know, I mean, it may be some of our fault for not inviting historical into here more often about this subject. Uh, but without their input and their efforts to actually, you know, think about the these buildings, which, I mean, is kind of what they're supposed to be doing. Well, we've, we haven't been on the other ones, and it went back around every time the members changed. Yeah. Well, we had them in pretty often, and I guess we kind of lost touch with them in a, in a certain way after they yeah. had and tried they to get the preservation right. restrictions. I think that I, what I want to try to do is push the North Hadley Hall quickly. Well, we have a decision process. on that already. You know, they've already decided. We the, the town has already yeah. voted to sell. Well, so oh, I know that. Yeah, but I'm talking have. about the select board. Right. I understand. We have to get the select board off to. Get this thing moving. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm sorry. We have to somehow yeah. either get it out of their hands and give it to somebody that's willing to do something with it. To, but it just seems to be still yeah. made it. You know, the, the visions of sugar plums, they keep looking for and it keeps going the other way and it's sooner or later. There's a lot of building topics sugar. right now on the yeah. agenda of the, of the select board and I think this one's fallen to the back. For yes, it has. For various reasons. Well, they did have, they went out for a proposal, I don't know if you were here, to find a realtor yeah. to do the job. And I took one through that came out and looked at it. I, they've got, I don't know if they got one or two bids, I don't know, but all of the, the bid, the way they had it written was they do the work and sell the place and they get a commission depending on what. Commercial real and the one that came back, or the two that came back, they wanted money up front to do some of the research that has to be done to sell the place because they're not sure about a, a deed. It's a clear. Yeah, it's a clear. Yeah. And that we passed that a year ago, and time. we didn't know why town council couldn't do that. I don't know why a realtor should lay that money out front to try. You know, I mean, if I was one, I wouldn't go through all that work to try to make you know make my money up at the end, depending on what you're going to get. I mean, you would think that you'd have a clear deed before you even think about selling because I know you can't you do, sell it in the you first place. You do it with a car. If you don't have a title, you don't, don't waste so, your time putting it on Craigslist. Uh, I just, okay. Maybe uh, that's what we should be pushing with the select board, that they yes. get that taken care of. Yes. It's just, yeah, I put it on the list for topics to discuss. Not, we brought it up how many yeah. times, but well, nothing's been done. <laughs> you know, the sad part is that it's up there and there's zero money for that account. There's a little bit lead in the fire department. You know, and you know, the one furnace downstairs, we're trying to keep it limping along just to keep the pipe from freezing. Okay. We got Larry here and he's yep. got a bunch of other things, yes. right? So, yes. Uh, have we covered enough of the Russell School project, I'd like gentlemen, to continue? Uh, at least we, we know. Thank you, Larry, for the right. executive we, summary we, of the this. We would have wanted to do more, but you said to. Just that's look it. at the report and mm -hmm. take it from there. So for now, that's all we need. Yeah. I, I well, think I've got yeah. one other question. That twenty-three million. I mean, Dave just brought up. What do we do for in five more years? What's that going to project to? Mm, what are we rounding up? up to? That's going to be quite a bit because I mean, you jumped from uh, twenty fifteen. You went from get back to that pretty, slightly different scope. Um. Yes, but I mean, what I was going to do is, if you compared 2015 to 2019, you're you're picking up uh, easily an increase of of seven million dollars. Same scope. Yeah. So five years of yeah, plus. So I mean, it's going to escalate, and yeah. it's going to be. Um, can you can you document presently? some of the detail that you have to replicate in other forms for what the columns. I mean, there's not going to be a, a, enough the left to refurbish. Right. Yeah. yeah, you're going to have to replace. Yeah. And times. so it's, it's going to be then a, a more difficult task to try to be historically accurate. It's, it's going to be, looks like, no one really remembers, 
there's a time. So you're probably going to have a 20% <coughs> increase yeah. in, in just by degradation right. and another 20% right. yeah. by inflation. So, so, right. Right. so has there been a um, film documentary on the building of condition and recommendations so we could um, educate the average citizen in town for what up there not lately not since the dra report which is what larry used as a basis well they did a video of the building before oh, the construction right. out here i don't know somebody has it i've never seen it yeah richard, oh, the Rich, yeah, uh, richard uh, had uh, had put together right. something they went through and video yeah. all the stuff so they could go back and review if there was any cracks or you know they did all the town building but i think I for, it, the, for everybody to go and make a um decent decision do we want to spend 23 million or do we want to sell it or are we going to let it sit and it'll be 30 million in five years um there needs to be the problem is you go to town meeting three quarters of people sitting there don't know what the heck you're voting on you know and that, that you're talking a lot of dough here and a lot of history so i would say you need something put together by these guys here with their film and uh, a written report maybe to go with it or you know it's an idea you know to get people yeah, to know but, but they've got to watch it too to well true right but it, that, that's okay. the, yeah. so then three quarters well uh, so maybe <laughs> you um, get another quarter that might want yeah, <laughs> another quarter might but at least then everybody had the opportunity to see it and there again, don't educated. forget, you know, when we uh, voted for the schools, they were going to redo that. Everybody voted no, it wasn't worth fixing. We yeah. didn't want the state 60%, let's build a new one. Yeah. So we did vote on it once a long time ago, and now it's, it didn't get any better. But one thing the select board does do is they do a pre-meeting uh, presentation of all the warrant articles, and that could be on there. We could take 10 minutes and just say, this is what this article is about, do a, a short presentation with all this information. If, not, if people don't show up, at least it's on, on TV, so you can watch it, and um, it's, it's available, so. But it's a lot of history yeah. and a lot of money, so either yeah. way. Yeah, this should be informed. It should be something have a chance out. to get informed. Yeah. Larry, your, your report, does it have any kind of backup like that, uh, photographs, uh, uh, existing we conditions? We did not take a lot of photographs. The structural did take some photographs because they were referencing some of the conditions that they were uh, questioning. Mm -hmm. uh, we were using, quite frankly, the DRA report, the initial DRA schematics to, you know, go back through and, and check numbers, advance those numbers to current rates. Uh, that's what the committee had right. adjusted, well, what we were trying to do. Um, and then, because I felt stubborn, I put the recommendation <laughs> together saying, Moved this over here, and, and it was supported right. by some of the committee members. So. Well, I think it's a good idea to at least have some documentation. We're we're going to show what what's necessary here. We mm -hmm. should have some photographs of it. Whether there's something Larry took, or we can we can go over there. And use there a good camera something. to take a couple shots of some of the yeah you know, the high points, right. low points. Okay. We did go through a, a, an exercise with the, the pros and cons, and and back yes. when yeah, right, there was a video of that. Right, mm -hmm. uh, we, we did a video we did of the walkthrough when we initially, uh, as a committee, looked through everything. Right, there, right. Think, yeah, Richard did. It was, it was three years ago. Certainly now. can do that. Again. Three? No, that was more. more. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, that could be something that's very telling as to if you have a, a t time period where that was done and go back to that same condition and you can see the uh, aggressive change yeah. and say you know this this is the result of not having the the support and, and trying to arrest this from continuing and it's it's going to and we can definitely see that in the court yeah. yeah yeah could be something yeah. we can put together that's a good idea I'd be curious what the uh, a private contractor would cost. I mean, you get rid of the prevailing wage prevailing factor. Wage. Yeah, just if we sold it outright to somebody, you know, you know is it half? Is it two thirds? Uh, it's closer to two thirds yeah. because we're doing another study in another town mm -hmm. 
doing private development for a municipal uh, my, uh, primary tenant. And we're trying to work out those scenarios, and, and it was substantial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did. So, if we if we do <laughs> approach the town, maybe in the fall with a, a, a non-binding non vote, um, you know, we should revisit that exercise of the pros and cons of what you know. If the town if the town were to keep it, what are the the pros and cons of that? I mean, if we're not fragmenting the 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 real estate that we have in the center of town, we gain some, you know, a much better building that, yeah. you know, you know when you're sitting in this room and the people watching know that when the fire trucks go by or a big truck goes by, you can't even hear the audio. Uh, that's not going to happen in, in, in that building for sure. Um, mm -hmm. the right windows, the, this, yeah. The, 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 the cons are basically the, the cost. You know what it's going to cost, how long it's going to take, and you know you never know what you're going to run into. Uh, but we—that's something we should at least have updated if we if we do some type of, of vote, so people can have a little bit more to think about. And part of the reason for my questioning is: um, so, is there any benefit to selling it to other than keeping it with the town um, for that reason to maintain that building? But also, would it be worthwhile to consider replacing the roof at this point? Even though we don't know who's going to own it. But that seems to me that that's at least something that would keep it from being damaged, other than we start dealing with the brick, which is going to be next. Well, the, the, the difficulty there, and, and I had broached that subject with, with Tim and with Gary, um, and it's where do you stop? You get scope creep vulnerability that you cannot control. Uh, if you take the example of the roof, if you do the roof, then how do you address that element on the west side of the building that might be taken off? I mean, you're, you're spending money right. on sacrificial right. things. Right. Uh, the other thing is you've got the chimney up there, which is not in use. It cannot be used. There's stuff right. running through it. So do you take that down and fix the flat roof? I mean, we did have them repaired. It is mm -hmm. capped. There's no more moisture getting in there. Um, and I will say the last time I had the guys out changing out the 100 slate, it was probably six or seven years ago now, six, five or six years ago. I asked him, you know, it was one of the, was one of the contractors replacing it. I said, ballpark. What are you looking at to take all the slate off, fix everything, and put slate back on? And at that time, he said, you're probably looking at over three quarters of a million dollars. He says, just to stage this building is going to be a chunk of change. Well, that would be my other concern. If you're going to stage it, you might as well do the whole exterior while you got it up. So, yep. you know, but you don't want to consider that. You don't want to fix it the way it is and then go yep. putting an elevator shaft on one side and tearing right. that, you know. Yep. You know, and the same could be said of the windows, you know. Yeah. You do it at the same time. You you start. Where do you stop? Yeah. You know, that, that's the whole the, exterior probably would be. Yeah. And the thing is, you're paying the lion's share of some of some of these line items, and you are moving nowhere with the building. Right. Because you haven't put sprinklers in. You haven't got a new electrical new plumbing. Or mechanical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, it's like it, mm -hmm. you know, well, reaching a point of all or nothing. Yeah. Plus, the interior conditions can affect the exterior by moisture getting in and yeah. out, and you know, yeah. so yeah. now you're wasting your time on the outside. So, yeah, you know, yeah. so we, some extent. we're at this junction where we're going to have to make decisions quicker. Yes, and, I mean, and, and move. In the and DRA move, report, that they, they commented a, a lot on uh, a couple men with ladders painting the trim. Well, Pretty soon that they won't need the ladders. The trim is starting to <laughs> yeah. and they the paint ground. it on the ground. Yeah. You know, yeah. But you know, yeah. it's, it uh, is it's ex escalating to the point that it is it's difficult to see see the numbers that are coming up mm -hmm. because you are replicating a historic non traditional or non contemporary construction and just the skill sets and this no, that's, right. That yeah. right. that's where you're paying. That's the, that's the only building in town that that has that. I mean, the the, the architect did a couple of the uh, buildings in uh, Amherst College, mm -hmm. who you know built that. There's nothing else around. There's nothing certainly in this town that's like that. So it's 
I mean, the, the battered stone that's exposed at the base is a very attractive thing, but we had a similar situation in uh, the town I, I live in, in Munson, and they basically couldn't really repair. They can, they, can, they can take out a loose stone and sort of reset it and point it. It's not functioning the way that it originally was. And they actually built inside of this building a steel structure yeah, to support bit. the building. So yeah. you're diminishing the, yeah. the yeah. floor area because they because couldn't rely on the patching of the wall. And DRA was patching the wall. So you're, you're moving out of that ability to just patch. Is there any restriction on what can be put in there if it was sold? Yeah. Same thing. I mean, again, you get to the point that uh, you have to look at the loads. Okay. And it would trigger full seismic. And that would have a serious issue. With that. Okay, so even if it's, it could be office, it could be restaurant, whatnot. But no, anything like restaurant or anything like yeah, that would yeah. trigger everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just but zoning wise, it could go there if yeah. somebody Well, then there's the parking issue, right? Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's not going to You'd have to give up the field. Yeah. And I don't know if the town would give up the field for a restaurant or something. Yeah. You know, they don't really use the field, but they need more parking at Hopkins and they need, you know. If, if we were to sell that building to someone, we would have to set it up such that they don't fail when they go to, to planning. Board. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, right? We've got to find twice the size of the square footage of that building right. and attach it to We're, we're going to a, change that. <laughs> oh, I believe when changing. I see it. Um, you believe but, that. We're yeah. going to change a few things, I hope. Um, those are all important points. And I, and, It'll be an embarrassment if that building starts to really decay to the point where people are talking about it and seeing it's, it and it's, saying, it's seeing, close. They're it's, seeing parts falling off of it. it it's um, close. I, I would make the, you know, the holiday decoration should be caution tape. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> yeah. So to that point, I don't want to wait past fall. If we decide as a group we, we don't want to put this non-binding vote out in the spring, then Let's not wait past fall I mean, because let's it's leave just time to take it for it. And if we can get our stuff together in North Hadley and get it off the plate, then I don't have a problem. I think we got to emphasize the select board Wednesday night that we really need to. They something has to be done quickly. Yeah, it's based on our new report now. Yeah. That's showing that this is mm -hmm. can't wait. We've got to keep moving on this. Stuff. And, and let's be honest, we have the good one with square footage that's usable if we had to expand town services. Exactly. So this is not a necessity right. for yeah, our program today. It's a lot better shape. Yeah, still, it still right. needs an elevator. Fair enough, it does. <laughs> yeah, it does. We, we can do that. Yeah, no, And it needs parking, but well, that's the other thing. That, we hope we have a, a game plan. Okay. That. All right, so we, we used a, a bunch of your time yeah. on, on Russell School, and thank you for the reporting today. That's very useful. Um, do we want to discuss the yes we portico talk, on the? Uh, yeah, we talked um, a little bit last uh, week on this, and um, you know, uh, Gary, uh, Gary, and, and uh, Larry did a lot of discussion on where do you stop, and if you stop here, what does it look like? And we got into it, and we kind of left it alone. Um, then the reason is is because the CPA money that we have right now uh, is very restrictive to to what it's for, and that was just for the columns. Now, certainly, the hope is that we can get so more money to do more work, but this, the, we we have to come up with a decision on on how much, and, and Larry had some pretty good ideas of why it should go to where it should go. Um, there. I thought that the the project really addressed the entirety of the portico, which would include the gable end, as well as the trim uh, running up there, uh, and then into, and I have to compliment Gary on cleaning the, the underside of the entryway. Oh, did you do that? Yeah, I did. It, it, it's, Great. it's quite remarkable as to where it might end up. <laughs> uh, 
So addressing that entire structure and out to the columns. Uh, the problem that I innocently came to the town asking where do we stop is running down the sides because some of the trim elements of the portico are just continued and ban the entirety of the building. And Gary and I said, well, you know, we just can't just keep going around the building. So we were stopping at the Go face of the, of the, the Stop structure. Here. Yeah, but so that's uh, entablature yeah. or freeze. I don't know yeah, what you I call it. Yeah, I threw some of the names down that we oh, could use in the Oh, good. There you go. <laughs> entablature. Yeah. I got it. Okay, so, so yeah, you, know, you wouldn't the, stop that vertically and then the van, that continues well, you know, around that was 60. the question as to, you know, what, yeah. what, what and where do we stop? I, I mean, mean the, this was the other part going up, too, is, you know, Larry originally said we should stop there because we are going to be replacing the flashing on top of these that yeah. stick out past this part. And, and I said, that's just going to really, you know, it's like putting lists in the, the whole So if you go up to here or do the whole front or... You know, if we don't have that money for that scope of the work, then maybe we just end off, you know, right there and just kind of touch up, up here. Yeah. And then we are going to do the ceiling in the underneath part of these. I mean, one of the things that we did early on is I convinced Tim and Gary to get the building tested because I didn't want that part of this project scope of putting it out and just saying, Oh, we think there might be lead. Can you find any and then escalate the price? So we have that confirmed. Confirmed there's lead. Yes. Yeah. There we have. <laughs> okay. And so we were, as an office, we were recommending a chemical stripping of the columns. And that's partially because of the degree of deterioration that you can see on the fluting of the columns. Uh, some of the punky wood, some of the twisting because of water getting in there, uh, and also the fact that the flutes change in size from the base as you get to the capital. And so you would be creating a sc scrapers for seg segments of that to do an effective job. So the chemical stripping was suggested, and I questioned that or directed that to some of my peers, and they were on board with that would be the recommendation for this application. Yeah. Researching some of the chemical stripping elements, they are very refined because everything is so environmentally sensitive at this point and so forth. So the fact that the building has been painted in the interim with latex paint means you have to use a latex stripper to get through that paint and then use a lead-based paint stripper to go through the lead paint. And so it's a double application that you're going to see out there that just elongates the process. But I think also the, the Secretary of the Interior does not like mechanical stripping processes. No, because it can deface the, the yeah. profiles and things like so that. So the chemical stripping is probably and it's more sensitive to the, to the actual building details. And the, the test that was performed was strictly on the paint. There were, there's a number of uh, applications of caulking and so forth, which also could have some hazardous material uh, components in it as well. But, you know, ACM, right? Asbestos. Yeah. So we, there, there's a lot of material that would have to be sens sensitively uh, addressed and removed. Uh, we were not looking for 100% stripping. Uh, we were uh, calling out on the columns again that uh, fasteners would be swapped out for the iron, from the iron uh, fasteners to uh, stainless steel, uh, correcting some of the misshapen pieces if they can be pulled in, if there's still substructure to the, the column that allows that to be drawn in and it's not uh, dry rot and so forth. Otherwise you have to open that up and, and pull that in. Uh, some application of epoxy and some of the crazing that is at the bottom from just the, the leaching of the water. Um, but the big question became where do we, what do we define as the scope of the project? <laughs> because um, do we have a direct correlation between 
what we can afford and what, what we have a budget for? I mean, no, I I, I got the, the message back from Tim that well, the CPA money said the columns only, and and he was one of the proponents of oh, we'll do this bit. And then talking to Gary, there, there was well, there was some flash in there that should be looked at and you know maybe addressed, and and we looked underneath, and it it just is one of those things where where is where you stop is going to be very noticeable for the balance of the building. So if they gave totally. X amount of dollars from CPA money, but you're finding other issues, they wouldn't consider upping that amount to well, if it's just the columns, yes. Uh, but it was that element that I guess it was one yeah, of so the problem is they gave money to paint the town hall once, so they won't do it again, but they didn't do it to restore the column, so they're doing that. Oh, this okay, so it could only be the columns, mm -hmm. which might maybe you could squeeze in your flashing because it's protecting the columns, right up top, right? Correct. Yeah. Well, so uh, let me just ask a very basic question how badly does it need to be repaired today? The, the columns, yeah, the columns need repair. Because there are some now some of the the elements that make up the flutes in places you can see the joints, which you were never supposed to distinguish, and that's you can also push out of them. Yeah, they flex. Back. You know, and there's little there's there's little things. I don't know if, if Tim's <coughs> pointing at some of the pictures on the bottom. There, there's some uh, iron railings that are in contact with the, yeah. the columns. So. We're going to have to you cut know, those now out. we're we're talking about to do the work on the columns. You got to remove the, the at least some portion of that the so railing so that you can actually them. work and then replace that. So you're not painting; you're doing metal work. And right. Uh, one of the, my statements then after all this was said. Well. Let's just do the columns and, and the blue ceiling. That's kind of and, where I'm getting. And, and <laughs> you know why? It's going to look so bad. Oh yeah, exactly. That people are going to say, and they'll vote next year to paint the entire building. <laughs> and let's get it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it was just it was a concern on our part. You <coughs> scaffold the height of the the column, and you're not going to address the, right. the work around Set the top up, of you know, that. And, and don't forget, they're going to be chemically stripping on top of what you just painted. I mean, they can tape it off, but it's just, just more set up. Well, yeah, they'll tape the... Oh, right. Uh, what about the rest of the building, and just in your opinion? Aesthetically, of course, it will look better if it's all consistent, but does it need to be painted? Yes. The, the entire there, building. There's, yeah. there in the report, was very uh, very clear that, there, that some of the siding, uh, south exposure being the worst, you know, is is in really bad shape, and, and yeah, it's, it's starting to split. It, it, it's also peeling off really bad over that. But I, I I think I agree with you, Tim. Where if there's the money only for the columns, that's all they the, want to pay for. Right? And, yeah. and the rest of the building needs it anyways. And remember the fight at town meeting last time? Do we final side? Do we do this that? Get the columns done, and uh, you know that's another. Fight down the road on yeah, see if we paint the building. Fish and boral siding. Yes, yeah, so there you go. But, you know, we and that's fine. I just wanted clarification because I was getting to a point of you have know, where where yeah. are we really stopping? And and I didn't have well, until just recently the CPA language to just mm -hmm. say it was the columns. And so yeah. we can do the columns and in the porch roof. Well, I was hoping that we could do that as an option. I know Gary, yeah. And, and, and soften <laughs> the ceiling. Or has, has Gary fixed that with uh, no, well, the brushes? It, so. It's a short-term but a significant difference. Uh, and just uh, going out there, you can see now that the hanging light fixtures, where he couldn't get cleaning any of the glass because it's inside the fixture, they look horrible. I mean, I mean now we don't have spider web, yeah. but you can see the spider ship. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, yeah, it's it's fifty percent clear and it looks like night and day, but it's still pretty dark. Are those like it's the maintenance? Those is historic uh, fixtures. Yeah. I don't remember really is. They look like nineteen fifties vintage or something, don't they? Um, so, okay. Well, should we just tell Larry to write up? Finish writing the specs up just for the columns and 
<laughs> and then just <laughs> what does everybody think? I go with that. I agree with that. You know, like, I you agree. Do you want to do the ceiling or no? I think that just do as an option. You start creeping into all sorts of things. That's right. You can keep it, you know, right along the edge and roll under. We were going to use that hate or what do you call the hate blue? Hate yeah. blue. <laughs> try to keep the spiders away. The only thing I would say is make sure it, if the flashing isn't in the column specs that you put the flashing in there. It's, yeah, that's got to you know. be up top. It's got yeah, to be. At the cap, yeah, the cap. There, there was. The house. But I, I would go into columns and as far as. I mean, I would almost say blue, I don't, care don't even get into the architrave and the entablature and just do the, the ceiling boards. You do the option one give me direction. That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> that is an option. Yeah. Al alter no, what are they? Not an, an option, alternate. But add all. Add yeah. all. Yeah. Unless you want to just do the inside perimeter. No, no, no. <laughs> well, see, that's the that's the thing. Then you know, you <laughs> can just right? keep going to that next. Then you get to that level, yeah. but then and, and right. yeah, the lower. Yeah. yeah. We thought we'd just do that I because mean, it looked you know, really nice. That whole dropped piece. It has a coffered little section in it. And do that. You could do that low. ceiling color, and it would just sort of really start to pop. But and then you, you would only creeping. stage that every one <laughs> right. time. Mm -hmm. That's what the whole issue was staging. You know, They're going to be up we, there. We were adding, you know, removal of the louvers, there. cleaning right. the louvers up, and, and making sure that you had insect screening and so forth in the louvers because, That's again, you year. were up there. And just so it was functional. an opportunity to do the Yeah, well, yeah those, those two vents are functional, right? Okay. Pulls here. Yeah, but, very but it, it, it has nothing to do with the column. It, it's, <laughs> it was tricky yeah. just to wash that with a hose. It, you know, I got a like a 15 foot ladder from the fire department. And you're luckily with steps on both sides so I could turn around. And, but because you've got the steps in the middle, it's really, you know, to stage you, you'd have to almost like run planks, you know, or staging across. You can't like set it up over it. Just do the columns. This, yeah, this town is so financially okay. committed to buildings right now with all the projects we're doing. All Not right. to mention then, the fire substation, which we don't talk about anymore, but columns, that, Larry, please. Okay, that's that fine. Like and, the, and I was sorry. Is that, is that the consensus? Uh, that's that's fine. Fine. Not voting, but that's fine. unless you like um, to. The town gave us money for the columns. Just do the columns. Yeah. And then I, I was I was directed to do cool. some investigation on Mad Dog Primer. And so what did you think about that? It's very impressive, but now I'm, I'm torn between three variations of Mad Dog Primer. Uh, and so I'm, I'm trying to sort that out right now, but uh, it was used on the, the building of the church and next okay. uh, And it has a certain amount of flexibility mm -hmm. and resiliency and still an excellent bonding capability. And it's good for covering rusty nails too, I guess. The, well, one of, one one of, of them was. And, and then there's another one that will build any of the imperfections so you're not trying to sand down any residual paint. You're, you're actually Did you get a chance to talk to Bob? Can, no. He wasn't working. No. Can, can we um, make a proprietary specification in a good set? We can, we can describe a or equal yeah. and performance that will limit mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Where right. you where you go, but we can't just say you have to. And you could write product. a basis of design into it if you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So and that seemed to be the the best because of the 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 fruits of the column to, to really try to keep as much there as possible and then work with that shape. So it seems very reasonable. Okay. And Good. Then the next thing is HVAC. At the safety complex. For the safety company. You're still talking about this. <laughs> well, we, we, we it's another phase. It's uh, page 400. We have taken four, the answer four, suggestion. This is why we put a good HVAC system into our new building. Yep, right? I learned by so they've reconfigured. Yeah. We've reconfigured that by moving it from the face of the building to the soffit, which Dan had suggested, so there's no weather right. issue. Good. Uh, and so that comes up into the attic space, and, and that first phase is essentially understood by tradespeople and ready to be released. And, right? and the second part pretty much is too. We have a quote on that also. And that's the one we should be doing right now because right, it's, it's not a season. It's a smaller stress. job. It can be done right now. And it's the part where the 
we just built the bedrooms where the gym is, where we had that. They put the new air handler in, and we've got a condensation problem in there. It's stripping the wet switches and the pans. Uh, it's just it's part of it was that the equipment replacement dimensionally changed, which the manufacturer can do, and, and you have now. 12 pounds in the in the 10 pound space Back, right. you know and so the condensation could not be dealt with as one would expect and, and it is um, it is a problem because it you know it has to be annually uh, addressed in the morning right. so we're attempting to get some air movement and venting in that area to mitigate some of that that build up but again, it's not an issue until you're in that cooling season. Right now would be the time to, to implement that because you're not trying to fight that condition. Okay. So what's, what's the status of that? Is that a bid set that uh, we're assembling for a... We have the quotes. The quotes. Um, supposedly, okay. I, this is where I get lost because Tim and I wrote up the capital stuff. It went forward. Tim presented it to the capital plan. The money was approved but the money wasn't approved in full. It, all of those capital plans this year that was approved that I've seen so far, as far as buildings go, was supplemented with the municipal building committees plus the school funds that we thought, Tim and I thought were gone at the end of the locker room project. Well, I'm at the point that I say, look, we got the approval to do it. Let's do it. Let's we go but so forward. Almost every, and that was the other thing too, capital projects weren't supposed to use, you know, we've been trying to get everything to put into a building maintenance budget. Mm -hmm. And we were told that, you know, well, building money, you know, capital is something different. So now we're combining the building maintenance money with the capital. Not we, but somebody. Yeah. So the finance committee is going to look into this a little bit for us. Um, and I, I emphasized the last finance committee last week. Okay, so, so the, the money's money. there, we just got to take it from here and there. Yeah. It, there, there's money someplace. But I think this is so critical that we really need to be Yeah, able that's... To. What do we need from Larry, or what, does Larry need some direction from Ross? I'm not sure I understand. I don't know how. I mean, I, don't, I didn't we, do any drawings for this. We Do we, we need anything? Some descriptions as to yeah, the BG components being some components what they needed to do. I reviewed those with Gary and... If, if, it, if we get the go ahead, we can get back together and get with them and come the, down with the ventilation it. part, still, or not? That's not mechanical, right? That's or, or well, you, no, it is okay. So this that's is not the fans and what, okay, okay, that's all. What are the mechanical aspects? ventilation? Yeah. Not, I, not I don't even okay because I will, well, I will certainly spend some time like tomorrow morning. Everything that I put in is capital. The number's not what's well, approved. I so don't I care don't where know. it is. I just want to know what it is, what the, the description uh, dollar figure is. And I will emphasize Because there was only one it. revision over the original quote, and that was because of a, a fitting to just go 90 degrees. Right, and that one, they, he said there, was, there should was, be really nothing. And, and Gary determined in the field that it was easily accessible just going out into that space. So you can work directly with the um, vendor, come up yeah, with right, what you need PG, to do correct. Right. to, to perspect formalize that right. and yeah. just say And work with Gary on that. Yeah. All we need now is, is a dollar. Give me that first thing in the morning. All right, I've got to go through all this. Yeah, stuff. why don't you go through it, it give me the dollar figures, and I'll definitely go downstairs first thing in the morning. And so the contracts we have with you, Larry, right now cover what we're proposing here that you do to support us. Okay. Have you, have, do you check to see if you... I asked my partner, and I'll get involved in that side of the business, so I don't know. I will, I'll ask you again. Yeah, I really yeah. need to know if yeah. you got those invoices paid. Because I want to make sure that you know we have X amount right to finish up. Where are we? And we have to recommend for the next town meeting for the project consultant budget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How right. much further or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Because I don't want to come short. No. That's the last thing we want to do. No. All right. Okay. 
that. So mechanical, I think we're squared away. Looks like we, you guys are going to work together without really any decision making on our part at this point. Other than we just say it needs to be done and we, we yeah, yeah, need. I mean, the, the, the severity of just the heat buildup in the, we'll call it attic space of the safety complex, will be mitigated to the point of almost not a problem at, at any time with just this ventilation running through there. So I'd like to get this stuff done first, and then one of the things that we haven't finished over there, um, and it's not as big of a concern as what we need to do with the HVAC, but we still have to deal with the sally port. See, you say that ceiling and the sally the port. The ceiling insulation. I mean, it, that we were going to do some kind of. We have to. We, we were going to take insulation is there, something in but or yeah, we got to take the ceiling and the lights and all that stuff down yeah. to, and then re put it back up. I don't know if there was enough money to do all of that. Yeah. We couldn't do a dense pack and blow it in. It's just too deep. It's way too deep. I mean, it's almost, it's over two feet. Between I know, that, I've never really stuck my head up in there. Oh, it's, 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 a, it's over there. two feet between the ceiling and, and the floor. Um, it is? I, yeah. There's a huge area there. Well, and notice that that's a, a, a brings to light what David was saying early, is we really, if we're going to put the senior center together, you know, the library, make sure we can, this kind of stuff doesn't happen. You well, know, just let's give us a chance. The problem with this is they didn't insulate it, well, or didn't insulate it enough. They they insulated, but it all came down. It, right, it, it's uh, probably insulated in the wrong technique. Yes, and it, it came the, all the walls. It came down, and then the ceiling. They pull start pulling things apart, and it's just like here. Is it a sheetrock ceiling or what? Yeah, it's a sheetrock. Where did they pull it? Because all the lights are still original. Lights are still in. There. Somebody must have gotten up there to do. So. Remember, they. Were I know it's always cold up there. That's all it, I know. I don't know that, that somebody ever. It's really cold. cold up oh, there. it's terrible. And the, when they open the door, you can't even hear yourself up there. No, it's really bad. Well, is is is, is it condensation will get stuck in there as well. You'll have some. Uh, you'll have you'll have some issues there. <coughs> the, you know, the, the, the having actually there's no con there's no air conditioning in that. Right, but it has a volume that will it will fluctuate with humidity and temperature well, also. Does it make any sense to spray foam it? I think that's what we were going to do. Oh, okay. I thought that was you got to take the you got to right. have yeah, access to yeah, it to do pull it that down. effectively. And you said well, you've got recessed right. lighting and yeah. no, the lighting is all so explosion proof on the inside. All ceiling. surface surface mounted on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the, but there's a pipes up there too, isn't there? not much in that ceiling. So maybe you wouldn't have to take the whole ceiling down, just make just some access strips. Yeah. strips. Yeah. Right. Okay. But let's get this stuff done and see what we got left over and figure out if we can do something. Yeah. I mean, to go back to the ventilation, that will be essential in just getting the temperatures down so you're not right. spiking as much. On these the, 90, the 90 plus, plus degree days. The condensation is, is urgent on the basis that directly below the second floor unit is electrical right room and the and brand new controls desks oh <laughs> mold so the condensate fans holding mold up mold but it's just hitting ceiling tiles the the, the, uh, the the alarms going off right it's shutting the system down every yes. time it fills up and then, then you're shot backing out the water to get down to an operating I took the, shut the I took the uh, wet puck out, put it on the floor, waiting for the pan to overflow without oh, tripping off. Shut, shut the system down, <laughs> first, right? I tried putting on a couple of pedestals to get it up on, and that didn't work. <laughs> it was so tight, you couldn't get it to go underneath wow. on a high enough one. Okay. I think that's a good area. Is that enough for you? For We're not sure. doing anything at the Goodwin right now, right? Unfortunately, no. I think, okay. but I think it's going to be resurrected shortly. Yeah. Well, we did have some numbers. We had an electric con electrical consultant come in, and he had some ballpark figures for upgrading the service for uh, to accommodate the elevator and also clean up some of the violations that exist presently in the children's area. And all of those panels are. are well, beyond <laughs> capacity. I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna repurpose that building, 
soon. Wouldn't we want to do that? Wouldn't we want yeah. to at least take care of, at minimal, the load center and some of the wiring? Yeah, we um, will. But we're back to the fundamental parking question that's stopping everything at Goodwin. And nobody wants to get in an argument. Yet. And that was kind of expressed when they approved last week or two ago, right? Mm -hmm. About Goodwin. And they never hesitate to bring that up. No, I know, but they're, well, they're making it clear, you know, what their opinion was, so. If you but agree that, with it or but not. that opinion differs from the parking lot situation at B1, well, yeah. which is an existing building. <laughs> How did that pass? Yeah. I, well, what really <laughs> it, it needs a question is, look at L.L. Bean, one-on-one -on -one grill and everything down at the Mountain Farms Mall. That's in a concentrated in a very small area. That got passed. And the only parking is on the other side of two very traveled interior roadways. It's not adjacent. Not contiguous. Contiguous. So how did that get approved? Yeah, they're big boxes. They're not town of <laughs> I well, just ask him. Yeah, and that's the one place that I the one in Freeport, we went up there a couple of weeks ago, and I literally spent a half an hour trying to drive through the parking lot, and they have a ton of them. And I could not get a parking spot, and my wife got mad and left. That's how bad it was. There were so many people driving through, following people. Are you going to your car? I'm just putting stuff in and going back. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be an issue for the good one, I guess, isn't it? Yes. Even, even if we were to propose a... a a surface lot over at Russell, it's not it's not it's contiguous in yeah, terms right. of the plan for the. Uh, well, we'll have to we'll have to talk through it with them and see if they <laughs> even willing to. We're, we're working on it. Just say <laughs> we got a plan. Just move Goodwin, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. Okay. I don't know what else you're gonna do. You've got to. We're proposing a parking lot across the street, which isn't that far to really walk if you had to. You, know, you still would have your accessible space at the building right. with what we've got. So there shouldn't be any issues. It's not contiguous. But Period. like I was told by one member, well, it's, it's an also existing not building. New. Technically that's not that was a, that was the explanation I got for the B1 parking. What? Well, it's an existing building and what were you gonna do? It didn't yeah. really require one. No, he had he had guaranteed that he only needed six. Not two or one. I don't know if there's six there either. <laughs> they have the right to exercise a different formula for parking capacity when they deem appropriate. So yeah. what would say? <laughs> they don't have any green well, space. They have a green spot. How else do you describe what happened at the V1? You can say it. I'm not going to say it. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Yes, I, I we guess will. what we're saying we'll is is that it. the Goodwin shouldn't be advanced in any sense electrically. Is that what you yeah. all feel? Well, that's the select board's also position at this point. Let's deal Just with the, the, the caution is is lack of swing space, and suddenly we need that pump. Yeah. And and then we're gonna be sitting here on our hands saying, mm -hmm. well, we. We don't know what to do with the planning board, so we didn't do anything. I mean, that worries me a little bit. I would rather have that electric system yeah. up, right. up to par, and I, then and then let's find a way to get the parking dealt with. Is there a? I, um, I think to bring it up in February, March, we'll be able to. Uh, a, a report on electrical, what the cost would be, or what needs to be done. So we. Um, yeah, I think that we had some yeah. some figures, and mind you, that what we did was we were told or directed to do the ceiling replacement and that was the opportunity to switch out the knob and tube wiring that is up in the ceiling. It runs up the wall into the attic. <coughs> but well, the so uh, the just to bring it up, <laughs> to bring David up to speed on it. So it's one of these things that when you start looking into it, it, it morphs into a much bigger project. So this whole idea was they hadn't needed new new lights 
go get let's get some LED lights in the library. So yeah, it's a just great idea. <laughs> you know, well if we're going to do that, we got to do some new wiring. And while we're doing that, why don't we throw some alarm wires up there so we can at least uh, extend the alarm system? You know, well <laughs> the ceiling is bad. Well, yes. But then, then well, but, but the, problem, the lights aren't in the right place. So let's take down the ceiling because it's loose anyways, mm -hmm. and replace it. And now we have the ability to do more wiring. Oh, guess what? There's knob and tube wiring. So now you got to trace it all the way back to where the knob and tube ends. Back at the and panel, which right. is overloaded. And then you go so back to the panel, and they're the not just overloaded, they're yeah. really overloaded. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're, they're creating. <laughs> not quite as bad as the highway department one, though. So, so um, it turned into a big, big, huge problem. Okay, so that obviously anybody that has a clue on building that, we got electrical problem over there with the knob and tube and overloaded panels. You'd be calling the fire station pretty quickly. Um, do we, was there a cost? Yeah, there, yes. there, was, there was some cost. Okay. So I don't have them off. Okay, no, that, that's we fine. Have them it, and those because I wrote a letter too that I thought it was foolhardy to just do this limited scope and mm -hmm. if there was anticipated additional work because that was where the dollars came in to change the service to the building and so forth. We were thinking about phasing it into two different. And the the select board, are they aware of yes. the dollar amount? Yeah, we had given it to them a while back. It's you're going back almost three years, I think. Yeah, yeah it almost seems like you know that's pretty important stuff. Um, that you know that should be on the town meeting floor or weren't or Article Two. You know, if it's. Well, there was whatever dollar there money, money for that. There, there oh, was money approved, yeah. right? CPA it was like was seventy-five thousand. Eighty thousand. That. that was for the ceiling and some of the work, yeah. but then they and they, then they've withdrawn that and given it back now. The library voted to withdraw it. Yeah, but that's only because they're moving out. Right. But, right. You know, which from their point of view, yeah, that's good. But, but that wasn't their money to. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. We we said we so, felt at the time it should have gone forward. Yeah, it was yeah. still a building that needed CPA money. But. Well, it's a building that needs right. money and Would, safety electrical right. issues so it doesn't burn down. Would CPA fund the electrical upgrades? Probably not. I don't no. know. That was for the ceiling part, right? Yeah, it was for the ceiling. So we were able to get a lot of that, but not for the... Maybe just the lighting or something, right? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if we're using historic fixtures or if it's just going to be LED strips and... We even broached that subject with our yeah. ever-expanding scope of upstairs. There's a, a very distinct fixture that is in the upstairs Beautiful. area. Mm. No, no UL labels or anything. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's I was changing a bulb out in it today, and I'm looking at it going, oh, boy. I'm on a little bit of This is not going to go good. <laughs> so, I, you know, it's a question of just what can be done. And how much you want to do. Because we could take those fixtures down and have them rebuilt. I wish we had a ballpark number. At least we could just sort of say, well, this, there, this there, is part of your there was some. No, no. The, I had sent yeah. some information I, on I to had, Tim just yeah. that, it, as he referenced, it was a while back now. Yes. But we should, I mean, resurrect that project sooner than later. Because once yeah. the library is gone. And this is something to bring up on, on Wednesday. Yeah. You know, we're, we're talking about utilizing it for storage, but you know later on there's going to have to be some decision. And the other part was you know there's they put a, a split unit up there now, but there's absolutely zero insulation in that attic, and you can't insulate because of the knob and tube wire. That's right. right. But once the library and senior center are built, while it's being built, everybody's getting jammed in here. Kind of sounds like, mm -hmm. and people are going to be sick of that within two Quickly. years. Yep. So that seems like the one structure that's pretty good. Yes. That could be a town hall S. Precisely. So, um, you know, it, But you're getting into other issues. I mean, it's just issues and bathrooms and uh, uh, elevator. Well, true, but if we want to use these buildings, you know. We have to do we it. We have to do it anyway. So. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, well, it, like you say, it's something to bring up Wednesday, at least to Put it back on the record, and I would definitely push for an electrical upgrade, even if it's used for storage for now. And then, 
then you deal with the handicap accessibility and bathrooms, elevators, and whatnot down the road. When or, it's vacant. Uh, when yeah, when it's vacant, when, when there's... Yeah, but you would, you would need to, to remedy the, the very obvious electrical issues Changing the service center, the, the entrance, service entrance coming into the building would be something that you would want to do. And, and you would be over building or over specifying that service, mm -hmm. anticipating something that is in a, you know, a subsequent phase. Mm -hmm. Because the only way that you could get an electrician to sort of clean up the knob and tube wiring and bring it back to a panel that he couldn't connect the wires. You'd have to have some understanding that it's no worse than it was. You've made it safer in the distribution, but the connection back at the panel uh, is, is not code yeah. compliant. Yeah, but, yeah, well that's what my question was going to be. Would the electrical inspector allow that? Yeah. I mean, there was, there was a small grant, uh, my understanding, that allowed for computers and, and things to be put down in the children's area. Mm -hmm. They're all extension cords. There's no hardwired service to any of those, you know, and that shouldn't be the case. No. One of the things that can get this thing off the ground quickly is uh, TV5. That means it looks like TV5 cannot go over to the Hopkins. So. The only other place it can go is a good one. Mm -hmm. So the question is, does it go? I they need electrical service for that. There too, right? yeah. <laughs> so I mean, yeah. where do they go? Down the basement, or do they go up on the second floor? Either way, they need to have proper electrical, and this will trigger all those issues quickly. And the library should have. Should have not pulled the money. Yeah, they, they should have done that because once the once they're gone, the maintenance of that building is left to the town right. has yeah. instead of the library. Agreed, but I think That's it's a different project that they yeah. than what they put in for through the right. It, 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 the scope it creep. Was, the, yeah. it, I think it, it it's really an electrical upgrade and right. not a ceiling lighting. It really it ought to be. Well, it, it means that too. Yeah. Right, but that comes highly recommended from this committee. That yeah. has to get done. Yeah, it should have been done. It needs to be done. Mm. That's the beauty of the computer. You can just pull up those dated things. So uh, I think that's all. We have. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, it. You know, someday we may want to look at that vertical circulation at the Goodwin. That you know, stairway, elevator, restroom bump out, and how that occurs. But you know, I think it's a little bit early to pull if the trigger on. I got a question. From, well, since Larry and Tim are here, if you put a bathroom on. The, handy, the first floor, which is handicapped accessible, is that? I mean, can you do that and make one floor full? Or yeah, yeah, that, yeah could, that, that could be your good. occupiable floor. See, the right. thing is that when you look at that floor plan, where do you put that? Yeah. Right, right over one of the other ones and drop. Yeah, but that's a very nice room. I mean, yeah, that's you, nice you're really room scarring room. up the. Well, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. Yeah, there the was one room you don't want to touch. There was a plan about ten or fifteen years ago, which put it on the north side as an addition. Was an elevator. Right, with the fire yeah, about if you, well, yeah. if you elevator just, and bathroom. But blow out the fireplace. Outside of the building. So yeah. that, outside that the building. room with the fireplace. Yeah, and yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so that all remained. Yeah. 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 Fireplace. And actually, as one of the windows too. was the access. Was the door. Yeah. Into, yeah. 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 No, I could see that being. Yeah. So that does exist. Plausible. But mm -hmm. And that, yes. seemed, that was favorable at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other than the cost. And not knowing what was going on with the library because it wasn't. Well, there. potentially even reducing the parking spaces even more. Well, yeah. it doesn't it go out that far. Doesn't it go out that go far. Out that okay. far. No. It went out okay. just there's a, a patch of grass there that was where the fire escape is now. It went out that was enough yeah. to, to feet, do that. Nine or yeah. ten feet. And that yeah. was about it. But it could work. Yeah. And not lose that. Well, at some point we may we ask Larry to help us. With We're going to have to. I, I'm sure it's going to happen soon. Because I, I can see the need for that space. Mm -hmm. And I think we probably find out as we're going to call you up probably in about March and say, mm -hmm. hey, let's do the electrical. <laughs> a, little bit, a little bit of an urgency. Is yeah. there anything else that we need at Larry so he can go home and send us money for? I don't think so. Anyone else? Anything Thank else? Thank you, Larry. No. Um, if 
I could just be copied on the decisions as to the scopes so that I can, you know, just say that, okay, we're working to those things. That would be the only thing I would ask. And, and you know, the, like on the portico, it's just the columns. So just call it a day. You know, I that's think that's the CPA consensus here, yeah. You know, it's just if it's something back from the, the committee that yeah, just sort you of want says, it in writing, yes. Yeah. We can put something together tomorrow and we yeah. talk about the other stuff. <coughs> we can do it. Get it out to you. And if Gary wants to set up something with uh, B and G, then you guys yeah, I will. Just I'll Tim and I will get together with the figures. We'll get everything out, and I'll try to set you up. You guys work on that, and I'll work on getting the money. All right, figure out work. I'm sorry. Well, and I think we need to check the fees to make sure that we've got the uh, enough money left in the consultant budget. Yeah, well, so well, I, I will do that. I've been negligent on that, but, or at least getting the right response. I, you know. I called them several it's, times. It's been yeah, the yeah. seasonal rush. All of a sudden, people go, oh, winter conditions. <laughs> yeah, already. Yeah. November, yeah. Right. Good. Thank you. I right. appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Great. I need to ask if you can continue. Oh, no. Oh, there you okay. We covered the fourth bullet of the agenda tonight, and I think the last one. Uh, for adjournment is to discuss any other items um, and I think probably we, we, we should just <coughs> recognize that we're going to be attending planning board or sorry select board on Wednesday to go through uh, discussions about the two buildings and whether they're combined or what the strategies are there we can not attend okay Right. Anyone else what planning? Time, what time are we scheduled? Right, is it seven or they're, they're shooting for seven, yeah. Yeah, they start at six, but I think ours is uh, later. No, I think it's at seven. That's what Allison put out for the okay. library being there, so I assume it's the same. Yeah. All right. Same discussion. I'm sorry. So, um, is there uh, anything else discussion-wise that we need to go over for that preparation of that meeting? Anything on you guys well, had we a have pretty consensus, lengthy discussion. I guess about where we think it should go. Should we do both at the same time, or are we uh, do we have a well I, recommendation? We kind of that kind of came up at the uh, senior building with Phil. I mean, and we're not quite sure how much further behind you got the library is going to be as far as going out the bid specs. Mm -hmm. But the one thing there was some confusion about the way you know we don't. Basically, if, if they want to, I think they should go out as soon as possible for yeah. both projects and also the North Hadley Fire Station because you, you may or you may not get people that will bid on both. Now, there might be, you know, I think it should be like, you know, we discussed last time. You can bid on one, you can bid on this one, or you can bid on both, but, you know, they shouldn't be, you know, I don't think we should hold them to one way or the other. What's the risk that somebody chooses not to bid on one of the projects, period, and then we don't get a bid on one? Well, that's what I'm saying. There should be an option. If, if somebody says, hey, I'm going to be in town, I'm going to bid on that one too. If they're qualified, you know, to do both projects. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the other problem is, you know, you don't want to hold one building back waiting for the plans to be done, you know, and going out to bid specs, you know. I think, the, when, when is the senior center thing? They're, they're going talking out? going out like February. February. Yeah. Okay, I think the library could be ready by then. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, if, I don't think we should hold one back or the other. I mean, it should be an option of, yeah. you know, contract. Because, you know, some contractors, you know, like they, one of the guys, you know, like Phil said, you know, some of your contractors are starting to get full at that, you know, for this. Mm -hmm. So they might may be qualified to do both, but they don't want to. And then there may be some guys that are. But I don't see well, a problem with going out together. They're not huge, so I would think. No, I don't see a problem is putting well. both bids out at the same time. You know, the yeah. bonding capacity is going to be a little higher, but I think it's going to attract some of the bigger firms, which is a good thing. Um, I brought this up to Tim that, you know, we've got two sets of plans. We've got two sets of specifications. Those specifications aren't going to match. Right? No, they're... That's a, that could be a real problem uh, unless we're really careful as to how we bid this job. You know, I don't want to give the contractor two mechanical specs, two electrical specs, which are night and day different. And, and then we end up saying, you know, this guy wants to, he wants to spec uh, all carrier equipment, right? And, and, but, but one of them is train, one's carrier, and the, you know, there's going to be issues if they're not correlated somehow. I 
think it was that's saying it. between the two buildings. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you're going to fit them they, together, you you want really one set of specifications that covers both projects. Yeah, I mean you you don't have that. I mean your designs no. are different for elderly versus something else too. You know, and it's it, but but just like even like a. And I don't think you're going to get somebody that's going to do everything. Let's just say you know the guy wants. Your to, subs are going to be different for a different building than the other one. I would think for some. Yeah. Like you said, let's say the guy, the guy, the contractor wants to buy out the lighting, right? He wants to buy it all from one manufacturer because that's the economy of buying everything out from one guy. He's going to get a better price. But the spec says this, this is traditional, L, you know, traditional lighting. This is, L, you know, contemporary LED. Right. And he might not be able to get them both from the same. Yeah, vendor. and I'm not saying maybe the whole general contract, but like your guys doing the ground, the, you know, the excavation work. The parking lot. That might be somebody, you know, the sub bid or whoever does that might, you know, get together on the same project. And again, the I don't only savings on who you know, the GC prefers to. And again, the savings there is if he does it all at the same time. Right. So he's going to form, you're going to form everything, pour everything, frame everything, you know, up at right. the same and, time. Right. And it's probably it not going to work out. You know, but sure. I don't, yeah. I mean, and if it comes in like that, and that's a, obviously, you know, if it doesn't meet what your specs are, then you know, go with that. Yeah. Well, I would think if they, could, if they could get the site work done all at one shot. Well, that's what I'm saying. The site work would be. Your foundations and all that could be two different kinds. Right, and paving the parking lot and that kind of stuff would be nice to have the same contractor. If yeah. You want to be a sub. You want to mobilize, demobilize just one time for right. every trade. You really don't it's want like to keep the, the, the setup's the biggest expense. The other part is just the site logistics of setting stuff up, having placed materials, well, right. you know, your equipment, your trailer, trailer, two trailers, two, trailers, trailers right. to everything would really take up a lot of space. Is there so a uh, staging area? Um, nothing proposed? figured out. No, I think it's going to come down to they, once you get the site, where are you putting it? Right, they're going to figure that out on site. That's the way it is. Means yeah. and methods. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, well, there's no separate off site setup. And if there's no room, for them to do the job. Then it's um, going to cost more. Right. So, yeah. because then it's, you know, order, make sure it's here that day and whatnot. Um, and maybe that's something that should be thought of. Is well, yeah. that if they're, if they're jammed in tight, they can't move, everything's slowed down. They're not using a lesion parking lot. Yeah, you know, no. guys, <laughs> no. I was going to say that, but, but you know, we do have Russell School again if we needed to fence yeah. that in or whatever you they could need stage to do. stage a little there. You know, we don't get a parking lot right away, but, uh, yeah. you know, well, maybe or we rough it out yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, and the result is you may get it. Right. You know, it's like yeah. years ago when they did Route 9, uh, we ended up getting uh, Mill Valley Road paved because of all the traffic that was going to go on there and got beat up. And we got that paved through the state. So, you know, somebody's going to be giving us wreck in the front of that. Well, maybe it'd be a good portion of that parking lot. Shouldn't be any freebies as far as oh yeah, go ahead, because you'd be out of here quicker or anything like that. But yeah, may not get a hundred thousand dollars out of them, but yeah, maybe we could get it roughed and uh, base coat down or something just to get them a place to. Park well, that was one of the things that they you know, because of the. The final move in was going to be, I think, what next a year from March, which is going to be tough for your, you know, you're not going to be paving final paving in March. And they were trying to, yeah, yeah. Uh, at least think before winter, if they could get the base coat down, and then you might want to, you know, might have to extend that when the plant opens up, depending on whether. I think if it's thoughtful and we are careful about how we specify products and make sure that we're trying to, you know recognize the contractor will have some economy of scale if we do some things the same pick the same paints or what i don't know anything roof color roof material steel frame something so that, that there's some economy realized there that would help um but yeah i think ultimately it could be a, it could be a savings and you wouldn't have two contractors on top of each other so i like that i mean i just think you know i don't think you should limit it to one way or the other if it happens it happens you know yeah it's just that because you never know what the you know what the market's going to be in, you know, for people too you know, right. some people might have a full play but they want to do one job right so it sounds like we're, we're advocating for 
or it being bid out with some flexibility in the, in the, in mm -hmm. the process. So I think you have a valid point about what things can we try to um, be similar on. Well, I mean, you know, we've heard from the town a couple of times that these buildings probably ought to look like they belong to the same town, right? I mean, we're we're not maybe building a campus per se, but but we're but these are municipal buildings, and, and they know, it would they be nice to have an like, identity. They look nothing like the one's I, I get one's it, not, and, yeah. and you know, one got they, a lot more money. They from the both went one separate did. directions, didn't even really converse about that, but I think we should, you know, if if we look at some of the specs and the lighting and stuff like that, roof materials, there may be some options that will actually uh, help the, the combined bid become a, a better savings for us if we're careful and afford it. Can, it, can when they bid, bid it out, say like electrical, can they say square D in both buildings as far as panels? No, can't. No, they can't. Can't well, specify, you can, you, can, you can make the specs written in such a way that it, you, you would only pick. Okay, but, but where I'm going with it, I want both yeah. buildings to be yeah, Square D or Murray or whatnot. Right. Yeah. The contractor's going to want to use one manufacturer for both buildings. Right. He's, want, he's going to want to buy it out from the same well, person. Well, only if, if it gets get, bid out. If you right. want yeah. 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 if um, the one thing Gary, I, Gary gets one and Dave gets the other, how do we control that we don't have two different brands of electrical service in there. It's, it's not it's unavoidable. Yeah. Okay. yeah with the one thing we did public bidding is did to specify is like for controls for heating and ventilation, you don't want proprietary controls. You want something that's you know on the market that you're not locked into one brand like they did at the police station. Big cost savings are available through design build rather than design bid built and the yeah, right. lost that's about, I mean they lost the opportunity. That's my world right now. <laughs> and that, that's <laughs> a couple of those. Yeah. And it's just there I mean there there are risks but that you those are the risks. Yeah, the, those are the types of things that, that I think, you know, if that if it went that route, I mean the threshold's only five million dollars. And it's that it's usually you know, reserved for like bridge building or you know big huge city blocks and whatnot, and little towns like us don't use that. But it's only a five million dollar threshold, and this town would not have gone through all of these headaches. Mm -hmm. and, and you could have, you know, you would have ended up with one contractor for both buildings, and they would have looked alike. And they wouldn't, you would not have. Yeah, and there's some. You wouldn't have had the problems with the planning board at that. Oh, the yeah the. the the science builder would be obligated to meet the requirements. Right, but period. I don't think that's, that's I, what we would tell them. Yeah, yeah. it would. It, it transfers the risk to yeah. the design build contractor, right. not not the designers. Uh, but I guess we'll maybe we'll think about it next time when we do the next Russell time. School building. I don't think we'll be around. <laughs> <this time. laughs> no. um, okay. Well, I think you know we kind of have a consensus that we want to approach this uh, as a recommendation to select board to to go that way with. Uh, Combining the bits and or making them okay. uh, alternate to that. do that. Okay. Um, I, the other thing I wanted to ask you guys, and maybe you have some recollection of this, but the, the demolition of the the senior center building doesn't that require photo documentation for the historic? Done, yeah. and, and that's been done and approved by the state. Yeah. I yeah, I'm assuming yes. The library so, had that done. They've gone in and done all the environmental testing. They have all the results of that. Right. So, yeah. The, uh, as long as the historic folks at the yes. state have signed off on that, then they need to have something like that hold us up. And then mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's been done right now. I believe. I know it was yeah. presented. It was done up. Yeah. There's very specific requirements for black and white photography and drawings and things like that that have to be a part of the. A, a, Set that's handed to them, but, you know, so because the building will be gone. So we've got to get, I'll get the blueprints in the back of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think anybody cares about the back part. <laughs> um, okay, good. So I think anything else on that discussion for Wednesday? It sounds like all will be there except you, Dan. I'm not positive I'm going to be there. It depends on I'm how much I get done. I'm not sure it's so important if there's a majority of us there or not, but it's good to speak in numbers. I mean, I'll 
I'll do what I can as chair to, to summarize things, but I have missed a couple of meetings lately, so don't let me put my foot in my mouth too quickly. Uh, if you see something that you want to correct me on, please jump right in. We probably talked about everything we want to talk to them about tonight, so yeah, you did, right. they're, they're up to speed. No, <laughs> I'll do my best. Yeah. Anything else on the agenda before we hit the adjournment uh, button? Uh, next meeting, I guess, but that's well, next meeting is Wednesday officially. <laughs> yeah. Well, other than um, that, I, don't know uh, I will say um, the North Hadley uh, Fire Station committee, the, the next rec we have a meeting tomorrow night. So we'll be doing that. They're, the next week conciliation meeting, I think, is next week. But right now, it looks like everything's on budget. Um, is I mean, can, can we get ahead of that one at least and say, you know, we want to see the plans? And I, we, yeah, I can get want, the, I'll get a copy of the plans. We tomorrow. want to, you know, really be part of the process. The problem is all these projects are pretty much all set already. That's you know, it's all designed for what Mike needs sense. and what Mike wants. Yeah. And, you know. That hasn't changed much from... Actually, it hasn't. that one hasn't changed at all. So I don't know if you saw the last set of plans. The but building, building is program is one thing, and I get that. I mean, you know, there's a certain program it has to, it has to maintain, but the quality of the structure and the longevity of that yes. is is really our purview to make sure that we're, we're getting what but we're, we're going to do. There again, they had to. that all figured out going in before they even got a hold of an architect, I know. more or less. Yeah, it's just a bad way to do it. You know, the, all of these buildings were presented by, not the town, by groups. Right, the committees. Yeah. Committees. You know, the seniors, the library, and the fire members. Sorry. Okay. I think after Sorry. all this is said and done, I think we should really put uh, put something down in writing uh, as a recommendation to go forward with any and other. We'll probably be dead and long gone before we ever do another building, but. It might be wise to do something. <laughs> There's still DPW, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. You said dead and gone. <laughs> <laughs> or we can build that truck wash eventually. <laughs> well, that's the next thing is that we got to deal with this. Those those uh, trailers. That is, they're they're going fast. It's scary. When's well, our new director starting? I don't know. They haven't made a deal yet. So oh, I don't know. tell. No, but I know. Well, Gary, could you at least advocate that we get a set of the plans of the fire yeah. subject? Yes, I will. Yeah. yeah, that's easy. I'll get that tomorrow. You know, I mean, a full yeah. set, not just elevations and roof plan. Right? That's I all. Mean, the, there isn't that much there, is there? Well, you know, if if they're as far along as you're saying, I'm expecting there's a there's a fifty sheet set somewhere. Well, set I don't know if they've got all that stuff. I mean, we have. Gone through. We had one mechanical meeting. It is going to be you know the redundant systems again in there, so that yeah, we want to see cross sections and insulation and material types. And I don't know if we've got that much done, but no, then it's not too late, right, Dan? We can. There you go. So well, it's yeah, certainly sure. not too late. For the it. problem is they're all negotiating the money back and forth, so somewhere there must be a plan. That's that's the problem. It's certainly not too late for the senior center, and if we, if I'm, I'm sure, if you communicate with Suzanne or. Uh, you know, maybe even EDM. You could probably, you know, start to get, you know, some PDFs or something from them as to how they're working it up, and maybe you can have some influence. Uh, they're they're down that path pretty far. Well, yeah, a full set from the other drawing from the old plane. You can take the whole thing home. You know, about eighty percent of that's going to be used again. <laughs> it's just a matter of resize, reconfiguring yeah. most of yeah. it. It's all the systems are going to be the same. Yeah. It's just downsize. Yeah. They no, they're not trying to be a pain. It's just simply think there was no hesitation just, when the when the architect brought in just one set of samples for the flooring, the wall material, and the stuff. And they would, oh yeah, that's great. So there was no forethought whatsoever by any of the committee members to make a choice. They just took whatever the architect presented. <laughs> You know, I mean that to, to me that's the, the you know that could be a catastrophe. There's so how do they know where they're going budget wise if you're not exactly yeah, saying yeah. this is cheaper. Well, like the boral siding was put in there. That was their first right and I was like, wow, really? You guys put the most expensive siding in and the estimate to start with? That's not how we do things in Hadley. I'm so I'm yeah. shocked. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so they were using I will say they were trying to use good Yeah, the quality. OPM steered them toward the right, right things. The and they're you're gonna get that's the end the result's gonna be the OPM to recognize that we wanted that. Yeah. And it's the same OPM for the fire station. Also. Yeah. 
Yeah, good. And they're, they're doing everything they can with what they got. Yeah, and they're doing it several times over. Yeah. So Told it right the first and time. And the fact that they jumped through the fiery hoops with the planning board so quickly impressed the crap out of me. You know, I thought for sure that they, you know, they would get stuck in that cycle of Hadley, and it, they didn't. They, they powered right through it. They've been to the planning board already? Oh, the, for the, the fire station? No. no, for the for oh, the senior oh, center. Senior oh, center. oh, the okay. fire yeah. substation has not been a not site plan approval okay. yet. I don't think they'll have an issue with that. So what's a quick description of the fire station? What is, is it wood frame? Is it wood frame. metal roof? Metal uh, roof. Oral siding or Oral brick? siding and some stone veneer lower bottom. Yeah. It's okay. si did you see it originally planned? Yeah, well, way back. It's yeah. the exact same building. Okay. Just heated slab for location. Huh? Heated slab? Heated slab. Garage on the right. Heated slab on the garage. Garage on the right, north side. Same, mm -hmm. same design. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Office on the left. Mm -hmm. We are making sure that you know, like, so we're going to conduit and water hydrant to the back of the building for any future. Mm -hmm. If you ever wanted to put another building on the back of that property or something, you've got your water line set up there. You know that kind of stuff. Uh, trying to and he's provide for the future different projects that may or may not come up, but don't dig up something that you just built to go. Sprinkler? Yes. Yeah, for the... It would have to be. It, it'd have to be for the... Uh, for the public pump. Pump. Well, just for the price tag of the... Um, Insurance. Yeah. Uh, and I th it, he is setting it up for a disaster relief building of need be, right? Yeah, well... As far as what? Like so you, there's going to be a small kitchen in there. Yeah, so no I think he's, uh, he's set it up so he can use It's not going to be a commercial you know, no. kitchen. It's just going to have a regular. Yeah. No, but. Backup dispatch place. Standby yeah. generator. Standby yes. generator. Yes. Solar exposure? Is yeah. the roof pitched in that direction or no? It's I mean, this yeah. land could always well, be, be southeast, right? right? I know it's pit the roof is pitched so that the snow would dump into the driveway, I believe. Towards River Drive. But it isn't. There's no. snow the snow guards on there, but well, it's pitched I over think the that south southeast exposure. Yeah. It's not great, but it's you could you could do solar if you know. Yeah, but it's gonna have metal roof so you yeah. you could put solar on. Yeah, but it has to be in the right well, direction. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't pick yeah. out. The direction is yeah, so the that they can. Fish west to east. The driveway is going to be for the fire trucks are going to be a separate driveway, just in and out. And then there will be a drive through on one side. And then the regular parking will go in the driveway and curve up the park. South side and the west side. Full so glass. all the covered parking will go down the price of it. <laughs> yeah. Full glass doors on the overheads? No. <laughs> no. No. Okay. I think two rows of windows. We're ahead. It. <laughs> we tried that once. All right. Thanks, Gary, for the update. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you, gentlemen.